Hi. Hola. Hi, here is Mr. Dose. This is Michael Bradley. Hey, I'm Memphis. Hey. Hola. Hello. I'm here with Soccer.com. 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 And I'm talking with my friends at Soccer.com. See you soon. Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you the What's In My Soccer Bag video for the month of January 2017. Now for those that are unfamiliar with this series, this is where I go through all of the best products that I found myself using throughout the previous month and highlighting them by filling up a soccer bag with apparel, equipment, as well as footwear. So I go through each individual item, tell you why I like it, and of course you have the opportunity to purchase all of these items for yourself by clicking the very first link down below in the description. That'll take you to the What's In My Soccer Bag page on my website where you'll find individual Buy It Now links for every single item in today's video along with exclusive SR4U coupon codes so you'll get these items for the best possible price. So if you see something in today's video that you're interested in, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. And without further ado, let's get into the What's In My Soccer Bag video for January 2017. So for the month of January, as you can see, I didn't use a duffel bag. I think this is a first for the What's In My Soccer Bag series. Instead, I used this very large backpack. It's brand new from Adidas. It's called the Tango Crosby Backpack. So you can see the Tango logo right there on the bottom. That is obviously part of their new kind of indoor streetwear line. Uh, there's indoor soccer shoes and street soccer shoes included with that, as well as some apparel. But this is the backpack, and it's a really cool backpack, soccer specific. So you do have the little compartment at the bottom here uh, that's completely separate. Uh, where you can put your shoes so it's not getting everything inside your backpack dirty or smelly or whatever it may be and you can see the backpack has a pretty unique design in that it looks particularly tall you can leave it and use it like this if you have it full of stuff or you want to hold as much stuff as possible like i've done right now but if it's a little bit less empty and i'll put a little clip on screen basically this top piece would fold over and then you strap it in place using this little clip right here. But other than that, it's pretty much just a standard backpack. There's some side compartments. Um, there's all kinds of stuff in there. It's got a, a padded laptop area on the inside as well. So it's very usable as a school bag if that's something that you'd like to do. Um, but really cool backpack and the retail price on this guy is $70. So it's not super cheap, but the quality and the overall style of it, I think is very, very good. So we'll open it up and take a look at what is on the inside. You can see that is the opening right there but we'll move it off to the side and we'll get to the first item in here, which is something I've been using consistently for quite some time. These are compression shorts from Storelli, the Body Shield Slider Shorts. And essentially they're just compression shorts, which I find to be a necessity for playing any kind of sport with the added benefit of pour on foam padding down the side of either leg. So that adds a lot of extra protection with minimal bulk that you can see or feel when you're actually playing in them. But when you do take a bump to the side of the leg, you definitely do appreciate having that little bit of extra padding. Those guys retail for about $54 US, so they're not cheap, but they really are kind of a best of the best soccer specific kind of compression short product. So if you're on the market for something like that, I would very strongly recommend those. As far as a training top is concerned, normally I would go for something much more expensive, but uh, to be a little bit more budget friendly this month, just to change things up, I went for this guy right here. This is the Nike PSG Dry Fit T-shirt. Retail on this is $30 US, so it's relatively inexpensive and it's made out of this really really nice dry fit material if you've ever worn a high quality nike t-shirt the materials they use are just so nice it's some of the softest t-shirt material you'll find on pretty much anything and the design is pretty straightforward it's a pretty much all black t-shirt with the psg crest very small there in red and then the outline of a nike swoosh there on the front there's a nike swoosh on the sleeve and then on the back it's left pretty much completely blank. But again, the material here, so soft, has that very comfortable sensation when you're wearing it, and it's got a fitted look as well, not to mention that you can wear it casually because it is a pretty straightforward, fairly simple, good-looking T-shirt. So for $30, you absolutely cannot go wrong, and they make those for pretty much all of their main big teams. So it's not available just in PSG. You can get all the main Nike clubs in that style of T-shirt. As far as shorts go, I went with these guys right here. These are actually from Puma. And again, the reason why I picked these is just because of the quality of the material. This is the Puma IT Evo Training Shorts. Retail on these guys is $40 US. And the material that Puma use here is just super, super thin. And it just has this really nice, soft, almost stretchy quality to it. So they're really, really non-restrictive when you're actually wearing them. All black in color, but it has this kind of cool, 
almost diamond-like pattern going across the front there with of course the neon yellow Puma logo. So this kind of matches their new latest pack of colorways. It does have the Evo training branding there on the side in a lime green, and it is technically their dry cell material. So overall, very, very good quality. Cannot go wrong with these. And again, I think they look the part as well, which is important with a lot of this training apparel. As far as colder weather gear is concerned, I didn't do a lot of outdoor training just because winter really kicked in this last month. So. Most of the time it was far too snowy, far too frozen, and just way too cold to actually play outside. But when it was a little bit cooler and I wanted to wear something that wasn't overly heavy, this is what I picked. This is the Adidas um, uh, long sleeve training top for Chelsea, obviously the 2017 variation. And what's cool about this is the majority of the shirt is this kind of sweater material, um, but it's still on the thinner side, maintains a good level of warmth, but it has kind of this short sleeve cut and then from the short sleeve area, it has this extended, almost kind of stretchy, uh, kind of compression gear type material for the actual arm part or the lower arm part, the forearm area. And then it has a little built-in pocket for your thumbs as well. So you can cover the majority of your hands without kind of wrapping your hands within the sleeves. So very, very good looking, very comfortable to wear. This is of course Chelsea branded. You're gonna be able to get a variation of this for pretty much all of the Adidas clubs. So you have the Chelsea logo and the Adidas logo right there in a neon yellow, which is pretty interesting. What is possibly the ugliest sponsorship on any shirt right now, which is the, I think it's Carabao. I'm not sure if it's Carabao or Caribou. I don't know really how to say that, but that is the logo there on the front in red and yellow. You do have the added little stretchy compression material for kind of a, a mock collar, if you will. So a little bit of extended area around the neck just to provide some extra coverage. And then on the back, it does have a little bit of a ventilated material with the big Adidas logo there in neon yellow. So very good quality. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, very comfortable to wear. And retail on this guy is $80 US. So not super, super expensive, but not overly cheap either. But again, the quality and look of the thing is actually there. So next we'll move on to a pair of training pants. This is part of Adidas's new Tango line as well. These are the Adidas Tango Future Training Pants. So this is a variation of what you'll get from the Tiro 17 pants. They're $10 more, but the difference here is going to be the material, mainly in the lower leg area. So you can see the styling is different in that you only have the Adidas logo on the front, as well as the small Tango logo, but you don't have the stripes going down the side or back of the legs. You're also not gonna find zippers here at the bottom. Instead, it's kind of a regular material on the front, and then the back of the leg is this super, super thin, uh, almost like windbreaker type material that I just really like the look of. It's comfortable to wear. I like the fact that there isn't a zipper at the bottom just because I find that the zippers can feel somewhat in the way when you're playing and that you just notice that they're there and they're not necessarily getting in the way, but you notice that there's a, some bulk from the zipper, which I don't care for as much. You still get the zipper pockets up top, but overall, really, really nice training packs, uh, pants. These are all black in color, which I believe is the only colorway variation available as of right now. And retail on these guys is $10 more than a pair of Tiro 17. So $55, not too bad in all honesty, especially given the quality. Next, move on to some training socks. And these are, again, relatively inexpensive, but I think the quality is quite good. These are the Adidas uh, Traction Impact Crew Socks, $10 retail, so again, Pretty cheap as far as crew socks go, but the quality is very, very good. It's got this kind of cool pattern to it on the upper leg with the Adidas logo on the front, and then this gray pattern. These are available in four or five different colors, this being more the standard black and gray color, as you can see. They are labeled right and left, although they're not necessarily right and left fitted, as you can see, but they still fit quite nicely. It has more of a heavily padded or slightly more cushioned uh, kind of bottom of the foot area. But again, very comfortable, no real seams that you can feel on the socks themselves. They fit really, really well. And again, just good quality socks for 10 bucks. People really undervalue the quality of their socks when it comes to actually playing. If you have issues with discomfort in your shoes, more often than not, just getting a fresh pair of new socks that fit you properly is going to alleviate a lot of the issues that you're having. So if you don't have a good pair of socks to train in, definitely worth an investment. And for 10 bucks, you absolutely cannot go wrong with these. As far as shin guards and shin guard accessories go, haven't really changed anything up. The shin guard sleeves that I use are these guys right here. These are the Storelli Body Shield leg sleeves. 
Uh, this is a product that I did have a little bit of a hand in as far as the development is concerned. I'll leave a pop-up on screen to the review video that I made and I explain a little bit more about that in the video. But essentially it is a compression sleeve that holds your shin guards in place by way of an internal built-in pocket. So you slide your shin guard into the sleeve and because of the design they can't fall through the bottom which is really nice. So that eliminates the need for tape. You can see the inside ring at the top and bottom of the actual sleeves themselves have this kind of silicone rubbery coating so that helps to grip your leg and hold the sleeves in place. Plus you have the built-in pour and foam padding down the lateral side of your calf providing protection in an area that wouldn't normally have any coverage at all. So again, having that little bit of extra padding, you don't feel it, you don't see it while you're wearing them, but it is much appreciated when you take a blow to the side of the leg. So those guys, Fairly inexpensive, retail price is $30 US, but if you're taping your shin guards in place, you're gonna easily spend that much on tape throughout a single season. So investment in a pair of sleeves, definitely not a bad idea. And as far as shin guards go, haven't changed that up either. These are the third generation C6 Agility carbon fiber shin guards. Retail is expensive at $135, but you truly do get what you pay for, and it is the best of the best in this particular situation. I know I like to say, I don't like to say that there is a best product out there, but for shin guards, I haven't tried anything that comes even close to these things. They're super thin, handmade aerospace grade carbon fiber made in the USA. Uh, they'll last pretty much forever. You can see this is the pair that I've been using for a couple years now and they still look brand new. They, they hold up extremely well. Really view this as the last pair of shin guards that you'll ever need because that is truly what they are. If you're on the market for the best of the best in regards to shin guards, you absolutely cannot go wrong with those. As far as the ball is concerned, because obviously you have to have that in your bag, I went with this guy right here. This is the new Nativo uh, MLS match ball for 2017. It is a brazooka variant. So what we saw in the 2014 World Cup now, so they haven't changed the ball yet. We're likely gonna see a new match ball in the upcoming World Cup as far as the actual design is concerned. But this features that brazooka panel design with of course the new Nativo graphics, which combines the American flag and the Canadian flag all in one representing the Canadian and of course American teams within the MLS. And I just think it's a pretty cool ball in general. It's an official match ball, of course, so retail is $160 US. But again, with these match balls, kind of like the shin guards, you really do get what you pay for in regards to feel, build quality, and general performance. So if you're looking for the best of the best, yes, the match balls are expensive, but they truly are the best in regards to performance. So we'll move that over to the side and we'll get to the footwear, which I think my choices were pretty simple this month. And some of you guys who have been watching my channel probably will have already guessed what I picked. But the first pick here is the Puma Evo Power Vigor 1. This is an absolutely fantastic shoe. I've always been a big fan of the Evo Power line and this does include pretty much all of the same tech specs and elements that we've seen on previous Evo Power models, but implemented in such a way that it completely reinvents the shoe, creates a very different experience, and the shoe fits really well. It's super comfortable, it's very flexible. It has a truly unique feel. Um, and you, you can't get it from anything else. Uh, I really am a big fan of these. It's, it's a bit of a shame that they will kind of go under the radar and be an underrated shoe for the most part, just because it isn't from Nike and Adidas. But if you're really looking for something different and you want a good shoe, this is something that I can very, very strongly recommend. I'll leave a pop-up on screen to a review video up on my channel where I go over all of the details if you want to learn a little bit more. So we'll move these over to the side and we'll finish off with the last pair of shoes here that I used throughout the month. And this is kind of a late entry because I didn't end up getting these till about halfway through January. But this is the brand new Nike Hypervenom Phantom 3 DF. The mid-cut variation of the new Phantom 3, still waiting on the low-cut pair, should have them very soon. Very excited to try those out, by the way. But this is the new Phantom 3 DF, the new Hyper Venom, and I'm very, very impressed with these. It is a complete redesign, now featuring a full fly knit upper. If you guys want to see a playtest video, I'll leave a pop-up on screen. You can get to see the shoes in action and just hear my overall opinions on the shoe. But again, it's a very big change up in comparison to previous Hyper Venom Phantom models. And the end result is something that I have been very, very impressed with overall. $300 retail price on these. The colorway, I know it's not for everybody. This is just the launch one. Knowing Nike will have plenty of colorways in no time. Uh, but nonetheless, extremely good performer. In my opinion, the best Hyper Venom Phantom that they've put out to date in regards to feel and performance. 
And again, it's just a shoe that I can't wait to continue wearing even after testing. All right, guys, that is it for this What's in My Soccer Bag video. If you enjoyed the series and want to continue seeing it happen on a monthly basis, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you saw something that you're interested in purchasing for yourself, click the first link down below. That'll take you to the What's in My Soccer Bag page on my website, where you'll find individual buy it now links with SR4U coupon codes, where all of these items will be available. So be sure to go ahead and check that out first link down below. If you have any questions regarding any of these items, leave them down below in the comments and I definitely will get an answer out to you. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all of my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that guys, hope you enjoyed today's video and as always, thanks for watching.